I do transcendental meditation. Um, yeah. And to me, like, you know, essentially on the quantum level, we're all particles, we're all vibrating, we're all energy, whether it's this desk or you or me or the phone, we're all the same on a quantum level, the same energy, the same particles. So there must be some sort of through line with that in terms of energies, like a magnet or something, you know, like, I believe that with a positive attitude, that positive attitude creates and pulls in more positive attitude because you have the like energy the right vibrations right the people who are like negative and and pieces of shit they attract shit into their lives right we've seen that hashtag you don't know? be a dick <laughs> right it's it, it, yeah. it's it, it's it's simple yet it's profound and if if we look at it on, on a wider larger scale you would think there could be a sense of our spirituality, a sense of our spirit that is also energy. And that energy quite possibly could be felt posthumously uh, throughout an area that you spend a lot of time or whatever. So in terms of being a spirit and my grandma needs to be walking around, I don't think so. But could there be like a tracer or a residual energy? Quite possibly. Could it be like, uh, yeah, like grooves in the in the carpet or in the floor after like so being there for so long it's just kind of it's still there it's just yeah see what what, yeah exactly or or is it another maybe it's another dimension she still actually wants to be at that house so but it's in a different dimension so she's still there but there's many possibilities yeah, Who knows? That. but that's neat <laughs> <laughs> hey did you get in a t- transcendental meditation because of david lynch um Yes and no. Um, <laughs> Is your hairstyle because of David Lynch? Oh, oh it's all no. coming together. Do you like uh, David Lynch? I know you mentioned David Lynch. My, I had a girlfriend. I used to suffer from really bad anxiety. Like, it made it impossible yeah. to tour. Like, it was oh. crippling. And for most of my life. And um, uh, I had a girlfriend who grew up in a household where their parents both did transcendental meditation. And she was always a real big advocate for me trying it because she thought it would help me and i was very reluctant i thought it was you know when you google it there's like people wearing like golden crowns and doing weird shit but (laughs) but but at the very basic of it it's a the concept of it is is quite profound profoundly simple but actually profoundly like uh powerful and when she said oh you know david lynch does transcendental meditation and i was like oh so he can make these dark movies because I thought, well, I don't want to be like happy hippie guy because my music is dark and I like to create from that world. And so when I saw like, you know, if someone can do a movie like Mulholland Drive or Blue Velvet and still do Transcendental Meditation, then there's something to it. And I started watching some of his videos. And that's when I decided that I was willing to give it a try. And it's the, it's, it's the best thing that's happened to me. I'm going to sneeze. Man, oh. maybe I should get into that shit. Oh, <laughs> sounds good. You're yeah. selling it good. I like it. Give us some uh, t- a TM trick. Oh my god, how, how do you do it? Yeah, just uh, yeah. a real basic caveman esque. So uh, learn, for the so, viewers out there, and, uh, so you, us you, and me. Someone teaches you how to do it, right? You have these sessions where they teach you how to do it. Okay. And then they give you your own mantra, and that mantra is secret you don't tell anyone that mantra and you you sit still 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes at night i don't do it quite that long i do it when i can Uh, but i try and do it daily and you sit with your mantra and when your mind starts to wander because as it does you repeat your mantra that mantra kind of grounds you into the point where you know you're doing the mantra the mantra fades away and then you realize holy shit, like, when you come out of it, you're like, I was sitting still-minded. And it only comes in little bits. Like, you don't sit there and for 20 minutes, there's nothing enters your mind in your, you know. But I I find that you need less sleep. You, You dive deeper into your creativity. You get closer to your path of where you want to go. 
And Fuck, I, uh, need I, this. I am in. I, <laughs> this I saw it as like, I was meditating a lot. I, I was thinking, and I envisioned, like I would come out of these meditations and being like, oh, weird. Like I saw myself returning to Los Angeles and also going to New York. And these are things that I never th- thought about really, but I was seeing these things happen. And then like, a year and a half later, once the record came out, we had signed our deal. And then, like, we were in New York and played a sold-out show at St. Vitus, right? And I'm thinking, oh. holy shit, like, I, I I created this. Like, I saw this. Like, it was like, it's like a domino effect. I initially, when I tried to uh, kind of assess what my thoughts were, I thought, oh, as a producer, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be a producer and producing a band in New York, which also happened with Boot Blacks, but they came here. Um, but, um, these, these, you have to create, you have to see and visualize something to make it a reality, right? It's like anything like you guys are like, Oh, we want to be a band. How do we do that? Like, you know, or like, Hey, we want to have this song. And like, so what do you do? You put a pen on the paper and you start writing, you pick up your guitar. So you're creating something out of a thought and that's our whole world. It's a it's a thought. Jason, and, do you do um, vision boards? Are you um, into vision boarding? I I don't physically, but mentally, mentally. That's, it sounds I believe like you're mentally that, yeah. I do. Yeah. What about what about waterboarding? <laughs> waterboarding? A, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> For the CIA? <laughs> and I have an Iron Maiden in the basement. Oh, Iron Maiden, <laughs> some excellent! Fr- fucking, this is some monster shit right there. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah, I know. I sound like a, a, a hippie flake. No, it's cool. No, man. keep it's going. Just, you had more in you. Where, where is it? Ju- it's just it really, <laughs> especially right now, man. It's hard. Like this, the past couple of months, I'm so excited, but I'm filled with so much trepidation because there are some things we can't change, like. Um, we can't change what the pandemic has done to the borders and to people being sick. And so we have to, um, we, I think we have to just be good to one another and, and be loving and understanding and not let all of the turmoil in the world pull us apart. And, uh, and I'm trying to stay really positive. Let's say if our tour gets canceled, because we can't get across the border or because the fall numbers flare up or, and like variants and stuff, that's, that could be a reality. I'm choosing to believe that at the very least us announcing we're going on tour, us releasing singles, the album coming, at least we're doing our part to spread some positivity, some hope and some excitement to at least, you know, our, small family you know yeah and touching back on what you're saying like you can't control anything in the world the only thing you can control is yourself so uh yeah so you might as well have that whatever yeah. you're flowing out of you is the negative side and not the uh, the, the positive and, side and 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 when bad things happen another thing was like uh with actors i was finding when when a door would close or if a show was canceled or something was delayed my old nature would have been to get angry. And now I just automatically think, oh, okay, that's great. Because there's another opportunity around the corner that I I don't know what it is yet. Like our album, it's like, oh shit, it's gonna come out October 1st. We're touring 20 something dates before the album's officially out, (laughs) you know? But I'm thinking to myself, no, wait a second. This is gonna work to our advantage somehow. And people are gonna, a year from now go, well, that was a marketing genius. You know, <laughs> I love you know they'd be like, oh, you created this demand for this record and then it sold, you know, who knows? You don't know. But if you're in a positive mindset, you're at least open to the possibilities of creating those positive situations out of a negative. And that's my TED Talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Fucking shame. Inside Ted's yeah. acting studio. Here we go. I think I oh. think I think we're everyone's gonna be a better person after watching this oh, podcast. Oh my god. Everyone's gonna oh. be a I, I know I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs>